Good day, sir. My name is Romer John El Nabua, a Bachelor of Science and Criminology, second year. So today, I am here to discuss my chosen topic, which is the Chapter 6, Applications of Photography in Police Work. So photography has and still continue to serve a wide variety of functions in our criminal justice system. Photography becomes a very important aspect in criminal investigation. Listed below are some applications which are subjects of our brief discussion. So, photography can be used in identification purposes like prisoners, persons of subject of investigation, identified calibers, victims of crimes, traffic accidents, airline crash, collapse of big buildings, shipwrecks, tidal waves, massive flood, etc. Photography can be used also in missing persons for public and alert warnings. Lost or stolen properties like expensive jewelries, rare coins, paintings, antiques, etc. Photo photography can be also used in civilian, police clearances, for employment, travel abroad, or other purposes. So, as I said earlier, Photography can be very important in any criminal investigation. So, photography can be used in recording and preserving of evidences. By the use of photography, we can preserve any evidence in the crime scene that is crucial in every investigation. So, photography can be used in crime scenes like homicides or murder, thief or robbery, arson, other crimes linked in the revised penal code as well as other special laws. Photography can also be used in traffic accidents, um, object of evidences like guns, bullets, shell, knife, clothing, shoes, other personal belongings, and etc. Photography can be used in evidential traces like fingerprints, shoe or tire prints, blood stains and other body fluids, tool marks, bomb or explosive, and etc. So the third one, uh, photography can also be used in discovering and proving of evidences that are not readily seen by our naked eye. So we can see or discover any little or tiny evidence in the crime scene with the use of photography. By photography and other elements that is used in the crime scene to discover any tiny or little um, objects that cannot be seen in our eye, like controlled by lighting, use of filters, use of different films and papers, we can discover any tiny or little object of evidence that is crucial in every investigation. Magnification or enlargement of tiny objects by the application of photography or photomacrography. So, photography can also be used in magnification or enlargement of tiny objects by the application of photomicrography or photomacrography. So, what is photomicrography? It is the taking of photograph through a microscope. The camera is attached to the eyepiece and it is the lens of the microscope that is used in photography. So, in addition, what is microscope? It is an optical instrument used for viewing very small objects. It is used to examine objects that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. So the next one is the photomacrography or macrophotography. It is the taking of photograph with a short lens. It is an extreme close-up of small objects to photograph. So the next one is microphotography. So what is microphotography? It is the taking of a photograph of an object in a very reduced size or tiny images of large objects. Microphotography is the process through which the size of a photograph is reduced so that it can only be viewed using a microscope.
So photography can also be used in for crime prevention. So visual presentation for lectures on traffic education. Um, by photography, uh, the, the civilian who is driving in the street can be educated about traffic accidents and with that, they can have the knowledge to prevent any future traffic accidents. So modus operandi of con game artists like snatchers or hold uppers. By photography, um, we can give warnings to civilian about this different um, um, con artists like snatchers or hold uppers so that they can prevent or they can fight when they um, when they experience or when they face this kind of people so civil defense informational services shared with other local or foreign police organization business establishments banks hotels and industrial complex security so photography is is not is not just a a a simple thing but photography can also save lives it can educate a civilian on on how to um, deal with different accidents different circumstances that may happen in the future so photography can also be used in public information photographs for press re releases posters of wanted criminals so photography can also be used in in finding wanted criminals crime alerts uh, every police administrators must endeavor to build a good public image of his organization and its personnel so photography can also be used in police training not just in criminal investigation so like prepared training films or video pre presentation of personal indoctrination police tactics investigative techniques traffic control civil disturbances demonstrations control riots or prison disorders documentaries for pre and post briefing on police operations so photography have have different uses so photography is not just about um, taking photographs photography can also be used or it is very crucial in every police works so photography is a uh, very becomes a very important aspect in every criminal investigation so now let's move to the specific applications of photography so the first one is the identification photographs so what is identification photographs an identification photograph should be an accurate likeness of the subject from which you can be recognized by witness or police officers so when you find or there is a wanted criminals when you when you when you draw or sketch the face it it should be accurate so that the witness could recognize or the the police officers could recognize the wanted criminals so these photographs should strive to reproduce every mole or scar wrinkles and other marks which will help identify the subject so every scars every wrinkle should be in the in the sketch of the face of the criminal so that the witness or the police officers can easily identify the criminal so the standard photographs for identification is the head and shoulder so the head and shoulder the, the standard of of photographs for identification is the head and the shoulder so the head and the shoulder um, the head and the shoulder shot of the subject's front and profile, either full side view or quarter face. Shot with closed eyes or squinted eyes should be retaken to show the normal appearance of the subjects. Full length body shots or stand up are somehow or sometimes taken on suspect of serious crime or like in robbery case where witness has seen the suspect at a distance or while running. So usually when the photographs were where you can see a full body shot it's, it's usually during or like the suspects have committed a serious crimes like robbery when the 
wanted suspect has not been has has not been yet taken to custody. So it is basically a full body um full body sketch to to identify the wanted person or the law breaker. So police officer usually collects photographs and fingerprints from criminals in order to identify them and they can easily identify them if they commit crime again. So when the police officer is taking a photograph of a subject or a suspect, a, sus a subject is holding a data board bearing the name of the subject or his alias, the police department or unit handling the case, case number, the date, are some of information that are usually included in the photograph. In photographing of evidence or evidential traces to show their original appearance and condition when received for laboratory examination, the standard procedure on lighting, camera position, data board, and a roller of measuring device placed at the bottom side of the subject must be observed at all times. So, as I mentioned earlier, photography is very crucial or important in every crime scene. So, the second one is the crime scene photography. So, for general consideration, the, prim the primary purpose of crime scene photography is to provide information that will assist the successful investigation and subsequent prosecution of a criminal case. Photography is used as a permanent visual record or the exact and original location and condition of different aspects of the scene and vital evidences of proof. The this so the photography is very important in preserving any evidences that can be found in the crime scene. Before um giving before touching before touching any um object in the crime scene it must first be preserved so that we can see, or during the, the during the the trial, the the original, original, so that we can preserve the original location, or original um, what we call this original view of a crime scene. So, photographing of the crime scene should be done completely and accurately before object of evidence are removed, altered, or lost. In the initial stages of an investigation, there are certain aspects that are not readily evident, but later, they may affect vital issues of the case. So, before, as, as I mentioned earlier, before we touch anything, or we touch any objects in the crime scene, it must first be preserved, so that, um, so that, the police officer can present the original view of a crime scene. So, general crime scene photography serve in the following areas. So, the first is to provide the investigators and the prosecutors with an accurate pictorial presentation of the appearance, appearance and position of, of objects at the crime scene or at the scene. So, the second one is to aid in the questioning of suspect and witnesses when their certain statements are being taken. So the third one is to present to the court an accurate picture of the scene, thereby enabling them to understand the evidences better and evaluate intelligently the testimony concerning the distances of the defendants and witnesses. So, it is very important to first preserve the crime scene. If, um, if any objects is be is being moved to its original 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 position at the crime scene and it done the pol and, uh, investigators or the police did not preserve it first it may be, it may become an issues issue and uh, it may cause the investigation a lot of problems the, the investigation may become unreliable
So, homicide is a general term and may refer to a non-criminal act as well as the criminal act of murder. So, since the investigation of death as a wide variety of forms, photographs should provide information. So, by the word itself, photograph provide information. So, by the photograph, we can identify or we, we can have the knowledge or the information what really happened in the crime scene. So, concerning the manner and cause of the victim, this set of photographs should help the investigators in the reconstruction of the crime and in verifying statements of suspect and witnesses. So, by looking at the crime scene, by looking at the photographs of the crime scene and 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 combining and combining the statements of the suspect and the victims, um, the investigators can have the knowledge what, of what really happened or what is the truth in the crime scene or in the crime committed. So, in photograph, it explains how the crime took place. It shows from the several angles the whole scene and all possible elements of crime. So, the crimes um, interpret I, uh, what we call this. Uh, the, photogra the photography in the crime scene interpret what really happened at the crime scene. So, it explains how the crime took place. So, by general consideration, the first one is the photography or the photographer must include the exterior of the building, including surrounding areas, which will show place and manner of entry or exit, places of concealment, visibility of various points, shoe or footprints, tire, impressions, broken branches, or shrubs. So, it is very important to include every every place or every tiny little place in the crime scene it can lead the investigators um, to determine what really happened at the crime scene so the second one is the room or area where the body was found the third one is the evidence of struggles such as overturned chairs broken objects or articles and disarray by this it can give a hint to an investigators to identify which is or who is the suspect at the crime. So the fourth one is the signs of activities prior to occurrence like the presence of playing cards, bottles of liquor, cigarettes, boats, TV, or radio sets. So every signs, every little object, every little um parts of the crime scene is very very important during an investigation it will give a hint or it will give uh, the a knowledge to the investigators to easily or to come up with a solution to solve the crime so the fifth one is trace evidence like marks of conflict on the body on clothing tracks of blood stains fingerprints shoe or footprints fragments of glass metal and other potential clue materials so to show the body in the scene and its position in relation to the articles in the room at least two photographs of the body should be taken at the right angle to each other and the camera position drawn from the normal position of an observer so other photographs should include close-ups of visible visible wounds and other special aspect of the condition of the body as well as the weapon so the next specific crimes is the robbery case. So what is robbery case? It is the unlawful or forcible taking of a victim's property from the person of the victim using any physical force against the victim such as striking or kicking and snatching the property away. So the photograph 
in the rubber case should be the general view of the exterior of the building. Points of break or entry, mark or force should be shown clearly with both medium views and close up. The next one is the point of exit. The condition of the room, be aware of characteristic patterns which will indicate the modus operandi. So just as just like I said earlier, um, every corner of the crime scene or, or in the room where the crime has been committed or where, or where the crime happened, it is very important to include every detail in every tiny part of the room because it can give a hint or it can give a knowledge to an investigator what really happened in the crime scene and they can come up with a solution to solve the crime. So the next one is the articles left behind like bulgari tools, like crowbars, metal saw, metal file, screwdrivers, and more. Trace evidences like fibers, adhering on windows, soil, cigarette, butts, burned matches, powders, tool marks, shoe or footprints, fingerprints, which include the places where they are found or develop so that so the next one the next specific crimes is the six offenses so what is six offenses a six offenses is the act that is prohibited by law common examples of sex offenses include forcible and statutory rape child molestation incest prostitution and pimping Bestiality, suddenly, sex murder, and forcible sexual assault without penetration. So, in the crime of rape, the photographs to be taken are the place of incidence, signs of struggle or resistance on the part of the victim, and object of evidence. The photograph of the general view should probably show remoteness of the area to normal traffic or its distance to the nearest dwelling place or that the place is not a normal meeting place for social purposes. Medium shots should show broken branches or pressed grasses if outdoor, and crumpled buildings or pillows strewn about if indoor. Close-up should show buttons removed from clothes, torn clothing or garments, hair or fibers, presence of biological stains like blood or semen. On the body of the victim are signs like contusions, bruises, or wounds. Before it was usual practice to also photograph the creation found on the private part of the victim. But this is not compulsory but voluntary. However, a written waiver is asked from the victim and from parents or guardian if the victim is minor. So, when, this, when the investigator photographed the creation found in the private area, it must be, um, the investigator must have the consent from the parents or guardian, especially if the victim is a minor. So that is for sex offenses. So the next specific crimes that I choose is the arson or fire. So arson is a crime of willfully and maliciously setting fire to or tearing property through the act typically involves building. The term arson can also refer to the intentional burning of other things, such as motor vehicles, watercraft, or forest. The difficulty of probing arson. The willful and malicious burning of property is so great that every technical aid must be brought to the photographing of an arson case. It is sometimes long extending for a period of several days. So it is very difficult in solving an arson crime or arson offenses. So the photographs to be taken during the progress of the fire are the following. The first one is the area of origin. The second one, the rapidity, direction, and manner of spread of the fire. The next one is the nature of the burning substance such as indicated by the color of the smoke and color of the size of the flame. The, sec the second one 
The next one is the progressive stages of burning as shown from various angles and significant changes taking place. So, the, se the second one, the next one is the un unusual arrangements of doors and windows. So, the last one is the identity of spectators. The arsonist usually returns to the scene to witness the burning. So, the suspect in the arson usually returns to the scene to witness the burning. So the the investigator must uh, must recognize the identity of every spectators in the area during the fire because sometimes the suspect is uh, usually returns to the scene to witness the burning of the place. So the uh, investigators must identify every spectators during fire so that is for the arson or fire so that is all and thank you for watching have a good day